Oh, what am I yeah. supposed to say? I could be right behind you. You don't fucking know. <laughs> I like the pizza. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. Yo, what's going on, Laura? You look so, so good. Like, your face is like, you, your <laughs> lips are full, your face is good. She's like, fuck you, Ash. No, but seriously, you're looking good. I was, I'm, I'm digging Meg's hair. It looks like sun-kissed, <laughs> like beachy. <laughs> I was trying to get it's it's very matted from like the the salt water, but yeah, but beachy is you got those like beach waves going on. Uh, mm-hmm. Laura's like over there with her fresh lips, and yeah, I'm just chilling. You look great. <laughs> it's that Costco glow, you know, when you were like are finished shopping at mm. Costco and you pass by like the the dollar fifty cent like jumbo wiener. It's like the that scent that glow is just you are glowing actually. Yeah, the, like the aura glow. behind you is just radiant. I've never been to Costco. Really? I don't go there, but man, no. it's wonderful. I went to Sam's Club. Since I was a kid, and I <laughs> love my mom, so you could get all the free samples, all the little mini hot dogs, and everything. That used to be my shit. <laughs> Dude, they like <laughs> grocery stores really don't do samples much anymore. I feel like COVID ruined like the samples. Like Costco just started mm-hmm. to do it again, where it's like you can like sample like those little like Starbucks quiches because those are like the little egg white bites are now like hot at Costco. So they always have like a little stand by the little like cooler section. And they're like, oh, do you want a sample? And I'm like always like rocking out to music or a podcast or something. And I'm like, oh no, I'm good. The best <sighs> was when you're a little kid. I don't know if this happened to you guys, but like you'd go grocery shopping with your parents and be like, go by the bakery and like, do you want an M&M cookie or do you want this type of cookie? Like, yes. always. Publix I would, does that. I would literally be like, Mom, can, we, can we go grocery shopping? <laughs> like, just because I want to go. Did you guys, you guys remember in like the aisles where like they would have those little coupon things that would just, it would, it would like spit out a coupon. I would like take 50 of them. Mom, look, look money. And she's like, we're not even buying that. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> What am I supposed to do with all of them? So I'm just like holding all these like stacks of coupons. Just like, okay. <laughs> all right. Oops. But yeah, we have a fun topic plan, but it's good to have everyone on. Cause I know, are you in, where are you at Meg right now? Are you in Spain? I am. And I'm, uh, I'm in Marbella. Marbella. Yeah. Spain. Are you going anywhere else? Or are you just saying it? No, we're going back to the UK tomorrow evening. <laughs> When do you and come then home? I go back to America next America. Wednesday. USA. USA. Um, that's so exciting. I've never the only time I've been to like across the pond is when I went to France when I was like in senior year of high school for a missions trip. Mm-hmm. We didn't really mission much. We did, but not really. I just wanted to go to France and Paris. Like what high schooler wouldn't want to go to Paris? Good. Yeah, it was it was really fun. But that was the only time I ever like went yeah. transatlantic and it was a long ass flight. I don't know mm-hmm. if I do it again, to be honest with you. Not without <laughs> like some Valium or a Xanax to knock me out. <laughs> you clearly haven't done the flight to Hawaii yet that I did last year. Mm-hmm. I haven't done that either. Is it how long is it? 11 mm-hmm. hours? Uh, well, now they do Boston to Honolulu, which is 12 hours. Yeah. What would it be for Florida? Because I want to go. Probably similar. Maybe a little longer. Because, I mean, we're same coast. 12 hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. With a stop. It has one stop. Mm, that sounds terrible. I would... If I were to do it... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I would literally need to be, like, not euthanized, but, like, knocked out for, like, 12 hours. Because, like, the idea of just, like, sitting and laying... I thought it would be better than it was being direct because we had a red eye and I landed at like seven o'clock in the morning and thinking I'd sleep on the plane, but zero sleep. And then like the anxiety of like, I'm home and need to do this, 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 and that. So I just never went to bed. But that was me the last, well, when I came, when I flew over here, I was supposed to go to sleep during the flight because it was overnight and I just didn't. So it's only eight and a half hours though. It's not terrible, but at that point, you're not that different, you know? Yeah. I think Hawaii's overrated, though, but just like I heard it's expensive, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I've always wanted to go. 
it, it's one of those things. I've been a couple of times. I've been to Honolulu and I've been to Maui. It's one of those mm-hmm. things that I would do once, pick your island, and I wouldn't go again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to go. I we, we're thinking about doing that for like our honeymoon because we we've been married six years and haven't had a honeymoon yet. So we were like, what? Thinking, yeah, I know. Well, we got married in college, and so like it was like we got married two days later. I went back to school, graduated, and then two weeks later he went back to school for like the entire like year, and then he graduated. So we just it never- depends what island you go to. So I've been like I said, I've been to. Um, Maui and the big island, if you want to call it that, Honolulu. Honolulu is like so industrialized. It's got Gucci and this and that. Like it's not what you would expect as far as Hawaii. Like I wanted like waterfalls and nature. And even Maui, there's one road for the entire island where all the hotels are is on the opposite side of the island. So you have to do this like whole day thing that they drive there and like buses basically on this one highway that you can go 25 miles an hour. So it's like a full day event just to go see one waterfall. However, I guess the island to go to is, um, what's the other one? Not. Uh, Should I look up a map of Hawaii? What's the like other main island? Cause this supposedly like all nature-y waterfalls everywhere. Not Malachi. Um, Damn, how many Rainbow. islands are there? <laughs> Tahulawi? Nope. <laughs> Nihao? <laughs> this does I think not... it's Japan. <laughs> I was just about to say, this doesn't sound like we're in Hawaii anymore. Where are you <laughs> it says Oahu. Oh, I can't say these. Oahu? Oahu. Is that it? God damn it. I only know Dahu. Honolulu. That's the only. All right, you keep talking. I'm going to. Kauai? Kauai? Kauai, yes. Why? <laughs> there we go. That is supposedly like all of your waterfall dreams and whatnot. Oh, I'm yeah. such an idiot. I didn't know there were so many islands over there. Yeah, there's a ton of little ones. But the like main wow. islands is more so mm-hmm. where people go. I would only go to get like an authentic poke bowl because that's where it like originated. But even then, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if I'd fly 12 yeah. hours for. I just want to take a picture with a lay. And a volcano in the background. That's you it. Can, you, could, you could green screen that for you. I was gonna say oh. we'll green screen. We'll go to Walmart. <laughs> we'll get some like fake lay. We'll get like a green screen for you, just so you can have like your little lay moment. Why? Actually, yes. could be like anywhere right now with her background. Like I feel like Honestly. you. You're like floating. We have no fucking clue where you actually are. That's true. I could be right behind you. You don't fucking know. Oh my god, this is too much fun. We're having too much fun with this. But I don't even know how you change the background. Uh, so talking. if you go to like the little video icon oh. at the bottom, hey, hey, <laughs> it still looks like there. We go. That's better. Okay. Pizza, you have it's... pizza on your head. I like the pizza. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. Well, let's let's get what the fuck is this? Okay. <laughs> All right, but yeah, we're talking about. PED specifically androgens today when it comes to the context of females right so we got a lot of questions especially from our q a people were like can you talk about like what a growth cycle growth phase would look like and maybe what you what we would use what we wouldn't use um personally and then also with our athletes i think that's good also something good to talk about um and then also just talking about like what could a like potential enhanced growth phase even look like maybe like what we would do as coaches what we have done we do in our athletes whatever um but I think the idea first should always come back to, are you ready to use in terms of mentally understanding what they're going to do financially, the cost, the investment, not only with the drugs themselves, proper hygiene, also health supplements, labs, making sure you're working with someone that's knowledgeable based on, you know, what these drugs are going to be doing to you and you know potentially for you just again, covering your butt and then also understanding like when it comes to femininity, what are you willing to like accept as part of like consequences of using or what are some things that are like hard, hard passes. So just as a recap for virilization, we're talking about like excessive hair growth where a man would grow. So like we're talking like chin hairs um, around the nipples, what I call the little happy trail, like from the belly button to like the pubic area, you can grow some hairs there. You can have hair shedding in terms of like your hair up here, 
um, obviously jawline acne, like anything that you would think that like, oh, a boy is going through puberty, like you can ex expect that potentially when running these drugs. So like also like voice is another one that people are concerned with, females are concerned with. And then clitoral swelling, clitoral enlargement. Um, am I missed any that y'all can think of? Facial structure. Mm -hmm. Facial structure. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say so, pronounced jaw or yeah. acne, oil skin, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. So having like yeah. those conversations and those like, you know, those, you know, checklists of what you were willing to compromise and not willing to compromise. And then also making sure, I think this is really good to have an accountability buddy, because when mm -hmm. you're using and you're seeing yourself in the mirror, you're seeing your, your PRs, your, you know, your logbook skyrocketing, you're like, oh, I feel like a billion bucks. But then you start to notice maybe things changing that you're like, oh, I thought it was a big deal, but no, not really having that accountability partner, someone that actually loves and respects you to be like, hey, I'm noticing these changes. You told me to remind you. I think that's also something that could be very beneficial as well. Yeah, and definitely having, being able to openly communicate these things with your coach is important, especially, I mean, a lot of women, we do have guy coaches mm -hmm. uh, for more or less, most most of them. Um, so talking about like, like clitoral enlargement or sensitivity or any type of abnormal hair growth can feel a little ick but it is important. They need to know these things so they can monitor your dosage. So making sure that you have that open communication with your coach is huge. I think it's also important too, to have like means of tracking. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're able to make like an accurate comparison, whether it's your voice or taking measurements or however you want to do it. And like, no shame in that, like it's your body and whatever is changing now may be changing forever. Um, I think that that's something to really take seriously because all of us have a, a shelf life on how long we're going to be bodybuilding and competing and everything else. Like you need to think of the fact that your body is your only body you're ever going to have and it's for the rest of your life. So these changes are not going to necessarily go away. I mean, there's definitely some, um, I would say, clitoral enlargement that then reduces once coming off of drugs, but may not fully go back to where you were. And honestly, if you're abusing drugs or on them too long or taking too much, whatever the case may be, you may be stuck with what you've got at its peak. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're young too, and you're not really thinking about your future, um, whether or not you are dating someone or not dating someone, because again, like not to be gross, but there are some guys with fetishes and stuff like that. But like, again, remembering that like you need to keep your femininity with what's important to you. And if you are with a partner, like having conversations like, hey, like if these things happen, will you still find me attractive? And I know some people might be like, oh, it's my body, I do what you want. Yes, absolutely. But at the same time, if it's risking your relationship and like your partner's attractiveness, cause like Eric and I had conversations. I was like, hey, like these are what, these are the things that are okay with me when it comes to like potential risks. What say you? Because obviously if they were a big deal, that would make me think twice because I love my husband and I also want him to find me attractive. So although I'm not making all of my decisions based on what he wants, I'm still respecting myself. I also take his thoughts into consideration too. Yeah, that's, that's important too. Yeah. Now when it so, comes to, oh, go ahead, Meg. <laughs> Your pizza's crap. I, I just didn't know. What were you going to go into? I was just going to talk, to, um, go into like, you know, what different types of like androgenics could be oh, okay. for a female. Um, mm -hmm. And this is where it kind of really just depends on what you're willing to use because there are some people that are like, oh, well, let's start off with testosterone as like a TRT replacement, right? Because let's be honest, most females testosterone like isn't what we would call like optimal. It's like middle of the range in terms of like, you know, getting labs drawn. And so if they're comfortable with it, they could do TRT and put their normal blood level of testosterone in like a, a sport female type of range where when we get the labs, mode. Drawn, yeah, like sport mode, right? <laughs> sport female mode. I love that. Um, but there are some females that like have been fear mongered, be like, oh, I don't want testosterone because it'll make me a man, right? And yeah. it's like poisons in the dose. Like obviously if you're taking 200 migs a week, yeah, we're, we're talking about, we're talking way beyond transgender at that point, right? But like five megs a week usually puts females within either normal, like a healthy normal or like sport, sport mode. Yeah. Slight, sport slightly mode. elevated. Yeah. Slightly yeah. elevated, yeah. 
I think it's also helpful to to have that in if you're adding other compounds to keep your menstrual cycle regular and um, keep your hormones within balance. So if you're adding other compounds, you know, you're not all of a sudden seeing one thing spike, another thing lower. Um, it does kind of give you a good baseline. And if you're somebody that plans to, you know, if you get to the point in competing that you're like, I want to be enhanced, you're hopefully committed at this point to your health and staying on top of everything and whatnot, but like also com committed to competing. So considering HRT is not a bad idea. Yeah. And I know we've discussed this in previous episodes about like getting the most out of the least when it comes to the dosing. I think it's also important when you're looking at stacking compounds to start with like a first exposure, like a couple weeks of one compound and then see how your body reacts to that and then add in, an, in another one. Like when you're more, I hate the word, like more advanced when it comes to these things, you can probably add in like two, three compounds at once because you know how your body reacts. But in the beginning, when you're fresh into this, this is your first exposure to PEDs, to androgens, adding in one at a time is going to be really beneficial for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so what Meg is describing is what we call like cycle mapping. So you can see mm -hmm. like how your body responds. And this is where you want to document like how you yeah. are feeling and how you are responding, which is why like, you know, journaling or having like, you know, an Excel spreadsheet of like, okay, I was on this drug for this many weeks. And this is how like my voice changed or my, my clit swelled or my, my gym performance, right? We don't want to just monitor like maybe quote unquote, the negative things. We also want to view the positive things so you can make the best mm -hmm. decision based on how you felt on said compound. And so like personally, um, like, I think a decent starting point is if you are wanting to just kind of take the competitor route to start on just like a low dose test, like three, five, maybe, maybe seven milligrams a week. And that really just depends on your labs, right? Don't think that seven's like the best because you might find that it's just too much and you're starting mm -hmm. to get like negative sides. And so I think like five is a pretty good starting point for most ladies. And then just monitor on your lab work and also monitor with how you're feeling. And honestly, just see how that goes for several months, right? Because you're going to notice a positive benefit. And then, you know, you can see like how your training has improved. You can like, obviously like alter other things other than your drugs, because what I don't want women to be like is like, oh, well, I just need drugs to grow. And it's like, no, you, you don't need drugs to grow. You need to focus on the fundamentals. And then when you decide to use enhancements, understand that's enhancing the mm -hmm. fundamentals so that way you get away with the least and get the most from it that yeah like any supplement too yeah yeah i was gonna say like growing up like in the gym um you would see all these like guys with like beer guts and like they just look like crap they don't change year to year but they're running so much gear like you need to nail the basics to help optimize these compounds that you're adding in like it's just a waste of money, in my opinion, if you're not like, you know, focusing on your nutrition, making sure that you're eating enough to support the growth, um, you know, focusing on proper training intensity, which we'll get into eventually about the DNR sets, but, um, <laughs> oops. um, and like recovery, sleep, just the, the basics and people just miss that. I see it all the time, but they think, think it's like the secret. Yeah. Did you just take steroids and magically be like Miss Olympia? No. I have to go to the gym. I cannot even wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So why don't we talk about like different kinds of compounds that women typically respond best to and some hard, some hard no's, some hard mm -hmm. no's that we would either not use or we would not use in our athletes. And for me, what I am safe with when it comes to the androgenic side is a testosterone starting base, mm -hmm. um, prima bolin, anavar, potentially winstrol. I, I I have mixed feelings on winstrol only because I know some females tolerate it really well and some females don't. So it really just depends. Um, NPP, I don't know. I don't know why I'm counting. Um, and then I know some people do like Masteron for women. I don't know. I'm still undecided. Like I know people say that Mastron and Prima Bolin are practically identical and yes, they are very similar, but personally, if I have the choice 
and I know the Prima Bolin's real, I will, I will enact, I will opt to do Prima over Masteron. I think where that would come into play is if the female naturally had elevated levels of estrogen that were still within range of like being in healthy range, Mm -hmm. um, just because it does somewhat bring that down. Um, Yeah. Yeah. To kind of keep things as as in balance as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can't think if I missed anything in terms of what I would use. I'm pretty much the same. Um, you know, in my previous, I'm very open about it. In my previous years competing, all I ever used was Anavar and like other things like T3, T4 and Clin. Um, but that's all I ever used. Uh, and then this go around, like I've implemented Primo and NPP and I've responded so much better to it um, based on labs because I did run like hormones in between I didn't see as much of a down regulation in like my estrogen to progesterone with it compared to when I used Anavar. It was very harsh on my body personally. Um, I could take a very low dose, like five to 10 milligrams max and lose my period like that when I used Anavar and everything's good over here. So that's where I am. I've, I've never personally used Winstrol. I've used it in athletes and it is like hit or miss with how they respond for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, like anything that's more so the, the dosing on it too, but then yeah. you kind of run into, can you dose enough for it to be effective without having it cause any negative side effects by having it at an effective dose? It's kind of a toss up. Um, I'm not surprised to hear you say that about Anavar just because like I think a lot of women run into issues with orals in general. I know that yeah. it's the um, go-to because it's an oral. You don't have to inject easy. yourself, yeah. whatever. It's easy. Um, however, you see a lot of people ending up with GI issues from it. Um, mm-hmm. Just from de- detoxification, same type of thing. You're saying spike, you can see spikes in estrogen because then you're no longer detoxing appropriately. Everything's connected. So you have to also keep that in mind. Um, no one system is separate. You know, it's not like, oh, my, my GI is separate from my hormones. No, they, they all operate together. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice access. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Meg. Nope. That's it. I just wanted to say the word access. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that I think would be good to discuss is like something like I've heard this said a lot where it's like females can take any drug, right? And like, to some extent, that's true. Like you could do a low dose trend on a female. I was just about to but, trend like, <laughs> but like, again, it's like, why? I would always do it about trend. <laughs> right. It's like trend. Let's go. Right. But like, I, I'm in a um, WhatsApp chat with a bunch of power lifters and they love things like Anadrol and Superdrol. And it's like, obviously that makes sense in a strength focused sport due to the effects on the body, um, especially if it's like a very short, like four, maybe, maybe six week course. But as females, like could there be some benefit like potentially depending upon the female but the risk to reward ratio in my mind doesn't make sense and so like yeah i'm gonna stick with is this group females or males because females females. anadrol if you look into the like science of it sounds like for females would be fantastic but then if you ask anybody about it because i've I've asked a few people about this i'm curious for athletes and whatever else they're like, do not touch it. Your risk of viralization is so high. So I don't know. I'm curious if, as to if you knew of anyone that actually did it. Yeah, the group Aren't that they... I mean, they they like it. They do. But again, like most of them are like virilized to the point where it's just like. They don't care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I guess <laughs> they're different. They're in different families, right? Like Anadrol is a, a DHT. Um, so testosterone and then 19 trend, right? are like so that's for the testosterone derivatives it's like eq i'm I'm doing my my drug family tree so the testosterone derivatives is like eq and then there's like yeah. trenobol which females do use trenobol i've used trenobol i didn't really see a benefit to be honest with you but i know some people love the trenobol yeah, and combo. i know they they love it the, the trenobol and what you cut out trenobol and anavar they love the the t-ball and anavar like synergy or whatever t-ball, that's <laughs> Yeah, I'm eh, so eh, on that. Um, but what women typically respond to are like the DHT family. So we're thinking Primo, mm-hmm. Masteron, um, Anavar, mm-hmm. Winstrol, 
And Anadrol and Superdrol are part of the DHT to my understanding. But again, like yeah. just because they're part of the DHT family, like so is Proviron for crying out loud. Yeah. But like females don't need to be using that in my opinion. I'm sure y'all would agree. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some, some, I, some I I've heard, seen some, but. <laughs> I just heard of a, uh, somebody I know getting prescribed, pro prescribed if you want to say it or told to use Proviron from her coach who coaches all of these like Olympian wellness athletes and she could be well on her way for it however i'm glad that she stood up for herself and was like i'm uncomfortable taking this because mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah their shelf life is very short for sure for sure and then obviously when we talked about mpp that's like a 19 nor derivative so dandrolone yeah. in other words and then a another like longer ester of npp would be like what people call deca right mm -hmm. I would not be using DECA as a female because the ester length is so long. That's mm -hmm. going to be like in your system a lot longer. So if you're noticing sides that are no bueno, you're stuck. Yeah. Well, so MPP, if you're, if you're using that, the duration of it is usually like what, four to six weeks, something like that. That's shorter. On the shorter like time. the tail end yeah. of it. But yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but those are like the, the family trees, right? And there's obviously other drugs, but like I don't really feel compelled to talk about them because like, I just wouldn't use them myself and I wouldn't use them in a female and guys can play with more things and not have like the, the side effects that we have as women. So we'll let, we'll let like John Jew and people like that talk about the guy side. I will yeah, say too, if circle back to our last episode, a lot of these are also beneficial to couple with, if you want to sit or stack with. Um, these compounds, if you are so deciding to use so something like Primo and then also using GH, um, insulin, all of these are helpful for they work. They all <laughs> synergistically work together. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that from a side effect, everything is also always on the dose of how much, how long, accumulative, but um, generally genuine generally speaking if i could speak um primo seems to be the most mild and best tolerated by females yeah and i think a lot of female athletes first time exposure female athletes would benefit a lot greater to these injectable compounds that may feel scary because they it's more invasive you know you're injecting something into your muscle but from a side effects standpoint and just health in general, I think that Primo is up here compared to Anavar. But Anavar just gets tossed in so easily because, like you said, it's it's an oral. It's very yeah. easy to use and it's not as scary. Um, but I think like going into like what you always talk about, Ash, is like proper you know, care when it comes to cleaning the skin, injecting properly into what area. Um, I feel like if more people knew about that information, then they would be a little bit less scared, I think, to inject. They're like, just hesitant because like, where do I inject? What if this goes wrong? Like, it is kind of scary, but That's I think having a coach also. Yeah. I was just gonna say, that's definitely a worthwhile request to your coach to say, hey, can yeah. we jump on FaceTime? Not only yeah. about how to inject, but knowing that you're injecting the right dose because it's that's oh yeah, specific. with the little exactly. Hard. Are you using a half ml? Are you using a, a one ml? Mm -hmm. Like that's gonna change every like how the amount you're taking. You want to make sure that's correct that you're taking not too much and enough and all that. So like. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty imperative. Yeah. And when it comes to like, you know, starting dosages, like, again, we are not many males. So therefore like dosages do not need to be high. Um, first starting exposure. I think that obviously does depend if you go the oral route or the injectable route, because again, orals are going to process a lot quicker. So therefore, like we're talking about like a daily tab. And if it's something like, um, Anavar, you can like break that up into like AM and PM dosages, but you know, for me, like my first exposure was Anavar and it was five milligrams every single day. And when we're talking about like compound usage, we usually talk about it in like a weekly average dose. So five times seven, 35 milligrams a week. Like, you know, I saw benefit, but of course, like I was still in the mindset that more is better. And so by the time I was done with that 12 week oral course, I had bumped up and my coach had bumped up to 20 migs every single day. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. 
that is a fuck ton. And when I got my labs back a year later with this coach that actually did labs because my prior coach didn't do labs, my kidneys, like the EGFR was like less than 60. Right. And that's like bad. Cause even females have like pretty good EGFRs, like kidney filtration mm-hmm. compared to males, but mine was in the shitter. Right. Yeah. And obviously like I didn't have a period at the time either. Cause I hadn't had a period since I started prep. So I like started my first cycle, not even having a menstrual cycle to begin with. Right. So that was just a shit storm on top of a shit storm. Um, but the starting dosage, even for injectables, like, you know, start with 15, right? Like see what you can milk from 15. Cause that's like double what your body would typically make. If we're talking like on average, what a normal female would make of testosterone is like maybe seven migs or not seven migs. Yeah. Seven migs a week. I was almost at seven grams, seven migs a week, doubling that. See what you can do. Please don't use seven grams. Please don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah you made a good point with, you know, we always talk about, you know, start with the minimum effective dosage and then titrate up as needed. Um, I personally enjoy only implementing orals on training days. So that way it gives your body a break during your rest days just to decrease the toxic load. Um, I think that's a great way to go about it too. Um, If you don't want to go like the injectable route is to keep it oral, but just keep it at five and then, you know, slowly titrate up. And honestly, I don't see many people needing more than 10 milligrams 15 tops 20 is is a is a bit it doesn't seem harmful because it's like little it's a little, literally little it's a vitamin yeah and you're just like oh just popping it like candy and it's like no <laughs> that adds up fast in your body so oh, yeah yeah they're cute but nah. <laughs> they're the cutest little anabar i ever saw are, right. so cute. <laughs> right Ooh, speaking of ooh, a good one osterine sarms Mm-hmm. What are what are our thoughts on Osterine? It's effective. Um, it definitely works, but I think at the same yeah. time, it also isn't worth the uh, long term repercussions that it causes. And there's not enough research and data and everything else provided for it as far as just how significant that is. That's in my opinion, at least. Yeah, I mean, I've used it before. Um, personally my body was very sensitive to it and I did I I lost my cycle as easy or easier than when I took Anavar so um I agree I think SARMs SARMs whatever there's just not enough you know research the long-term side effects they're just still very unknown we're just lacking evidence so I'm like why not use the real deal that has more inch what no, that just has more research. I just feel more comfortable that way. I would say too, that one thing when you're deciding or considering using PEDs, doing not to like go down the rabbit hole of science, but like find out exactly what it was initially created for. Because most of these are actual medications that are created for humans for certain things, but some of them like Tren is created for bulls. So you know, <laughs> keep that in mind. They are not bulls. <laughs> when you're taking bull tranquilizer, <laughs> that wasn't quite made for you. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, if I was wanting to do WPD, like if my body could actually get big in full transparency, I probably would try Tren just because at that point I would Fucking be so that. far gone. that it's just like, whatever. But like, obviously that's not my scenario. My little hair looks her mental health like in mind though too. I've seen females use it and like are assholes on it. And I mean guys are too, but like it was extreme from the observation that I had. Right. Um, I would be more curious though, just from the aggression. Like I would just like for me, I'm like the fucking cat. It's like I'm curious about it. So if I was gonna yeah. like just completely disregard my health, my femininity, like my marriage, everything, and to just okay, push, throw yeah, like throw everything away just for a, a plastic trophy, I'd be <laughs> curious to try it. But obviously, again, Halo Saint, like we're not doing that. Um, but yeah, start with like the lowest dose th- that you can do, and like stack it, not with other androgens, but insulin, growth hormone, L-carnitine. These guys are like the wiggles of drugs, right? Like the the Teletubbies, they're all friends. And because of their like friendship, you are able to use less androgenic 
drugs. Yeah. So therefore your realization, your other negative side effects are much lower. And honestly, if I were to redo things, I would have gotten over my fear of needles. I would have started on L-carnitine first, just to kind of like dip my toe in the water. And then I would be using, well, probably not growth at the time. I probably couldn't have afforded growth to be totally honest with you, but I would have done L-carn and I would have done at least insulin. And then I would have started like a TRT, but this is in the context after I would have fully have recovered from contest prep from my surgery and established my period, because that is something that I regret to this day that like I wasn't educated. I didn't know better. And now this is a big reason why I wanted to talk about this and like have a podcast with some really intelligent, badass females is so that like five years ago, little Ashley would have had a podcast like this being like, Hey, don't do this. Well, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know Ash keeps bringing it up, the fact that, you know, she started her first cycle without even having a menstrual cycle and people kind of shrug it off like, oh, what's the big deal? But, you know, the primary side effect of using these drugs is the suppression of what are called gonadotropin. So, you know, suppressing these is going to cause anovulation and that's already messing up your estrogen to progesterone ratio. And then you're taking these compounds, further suppressing that and likely you're in your 20s. That's not, should, that should not be happening. You should be ovulating and having a regular menstrual cycle. And most people, most girls like my age, thankfully, I never really took birth control, but most have been on it since the age of like 12, 13 years old. So that's already suppressing a lot of your natural sex hormone production. So mm-hmm. something to take into account. And if you're listening to this and saying, well, I don't want to have kids anyways, it doesn't matter. So you yeah, have yeah, it does not. so many other risks. I mean, your, your mental health, how mm-hmm. your depression, anxiety, all of that is connected to it. Bone health injuries. Um, when I didn't have a cycle for seven years, I was constantly getting stress fractures, like literally every couple of months, a new stress fracture and injured and yeah. it sucked. So that, that is not a position that you want to put yourself in. Yeah. And when you think about, I mean, estrogen it has like cardioprotective benefits too. So if we're downregulating that, like your heart is very important and people just take this so lightly and they shouldn't. For sure. I do also want to add like a little like disclaimer that mm-hmm. it wasn't just the drugs or just competing. I've also had, like I started my period first at 10 years old and I have a family history of poor ovarian and uterine health. So like, mm-hmm. even when I was like growing up and put on birth control, deeply anorexic, like I've always had menstrual cycle issues. So I don't want people, girls to listen to this and be like, oh, bodybuilding fucked her up. Like I was already fucked okay. up beforehand, right? <laughs> but my decisions definitely exacerbated like my issues now, right? So it wasn't the reason, but it certainly didn't help either. It was like, there was already like a dumpster fire and I was just like, hey, gasoline, boom. One other thing that we didn't really touch upon too is, so especially when doing a first cycle, I think a lot of people have the misconception that like, I'm going to feel like a superhero. Like all of a sudden you're going to feel so great. Figuring out what works well for your body and best for your body is not always the most fun. And I think that it can also become a little disheartening if you're trying things that don't necessarily work. So that's why keeping the dose small, having shorter esters, so it's not going to be something that's within your system for a long period of time. So you don't end up in the position that you, you know, you go all in on it, feel like shit and they're kind of stuck because there's no guarantee how your body's going to respond. Everybody's different. And some people feel great. Some people feel terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And also, I mean, people assume, you know, once you start taking these, that it's like we've talked about, it's like a magic pill or something. But if you don't nail the basics, especially when it comes to your training and making sure that you can progress without the usage of drugs, um, you know, just taking some Anavar, taking some Primo, if you just pull off the like gas on your training, it's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. You're just, yeah, it's just not. Especially too, that you can't stay on this forever. You have to come on, come off, take time off or whatever. The, you know, in your off season, when you're not on anything, you can't have that be a holding period. That's when you need to be able to progress. So your, your habits, when it's, training intensity, nutrition, all of the above, sleep, hygiene, whatever, need to be optimal at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. 
Absolutely. I think it'd be good to talk about like what a potential like growth phase could look like for someone first starting out or maybe what we would do in terms of like walking a female through, you know, a, a enhanced growth cycle. So let's say we take an arbit arbitrary 16 or 20 week growth phase, right? Like four to five months of like solid growth with the context that you are using like enhancements, because I personally don't put like a growth cap on naturals because like, as long as we're not getting too fat, insulin sensitivity is still good. Like I'm not worried about drug exposure, right? So we'll, we'll go until we go, but for enhanced crowd, let's say we take a 20 week period where we're like, okay, this is dedicated to growth. Like the first four weeks for me are going to just be focused on making sure nutrition's where it needs to be. Like we are in a caloric surplus and our training is already dirt nasty. Then from there, then I'm going to dirt nasty y'all dirt nasty. Like we're, we're, we're out to get it. Even Eric's laughing. Um, dirt nasty. I, know I just pictured like WWF wrestling. When you said I mean, <laughs> kind of right. Like get down and dirty, like really break out those DNR sets, but you know, <laughs> Then from there, then it's like, okay, well, we can do the non-virilizing compound. So L-carnitine is something that I use year round. I don't cycle that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's beneficial in all phases. So I always keep that in, but then it's like, okay, well, let's add in like one IU of GH and let's add in like a, a basal insulin and we'll milk that for, you know, two, three, four weeks. And then from there, so if we're already eight weeks into a 20 week growth phase, then from there, it's like, okay, well, let's add in like if they're wanting to do like TRT for the rest of their lives or whatever, like the TRT is already in place in this scenario, but this is where I would stack like the Prima Bolin. Or if they're like, Hey, I'm still like iffy on wanting to do an injectable, um, androgenic steroid then okay. What about like Anavar? And then from there, that really depends upon like what they're willing to use and what side effects we're looking out for in terms of their femininity, because their like androgenic cycle could be as short as eight weeks, or if they're having no issues, as long as potentially 12 or maybe even 16, but it really just depends on their feedback, right? Are their training still good? Body comp still good? Side effects are in line. And then from there, it's like, okay, we, we've milked this growth phase time to come off, you know, enter into a holding phase, get some labs done and clean things up a little bit. Like that's what I would personally do and have done. Yep. The only thing that you didn't mention would be maybe like, well, are we going into starting doses or no? We touched on it earlier. I, if your first exposure, I would do, honestly, I would start with 15. That's what I wish I would have done. Honestly, so you're talking total, total. Of, okay. Weekly. Yeah weekly, not 15 milligrams of Anavar every single day. Don't do that, please. Please. So I wanted to make sure to specify everybody listening to what we meant. Yeah. They're like, yo, 15, let's every single day. Let's go. That would let's be go. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's important too, is like the 15 milligrams. I think that's a good starting dose, but kind of like what I talked about in the beginning of when you're stacking compounds, maybe run one like four week cycle at 15 milligrams and then do another at like 30 and then assess from there. So don't just do like two weeks and then bump it up. It's like give your body time to actually utilize these compounds and get, well, I don't want to say get side effects from it, but, you know, make sure you can measure the side effects appropriately. And then rule of, rule of thumb is typically, you know, give yourself at least as long as you are on off to then, you know, For example. In, in, I'm saying mit on the minimum, um, but then also make sure, you know, you're redoing your labs, you're staying on top of your health supplements, your Tetka, your milk thistle, your NAC, all of the above, um, using your nutrition for detoxification, everything's internally up to operating again you know your cycle is good period cycle is good yeah and i mean i think it's cool um if you can financially do it to get like your a comprehensive panel ran during a cycle especially like maybe in a growth phase when you have like a higher androgenic load just to see what your internal body is saying like you can be feeling awesome feeling great not having any virilization but then you look at your labs, your cholesterol is tanked, your liver enzymes are jacked up, your kidneys crap. Like we need to kind of assess it at an internal level too. I think I really want to personally do that this time. I've never tested like a full comprehensive panel when I ran a cycle. I think that would be really sweet, mm -hmm. but I'm like a nerd. So <laughs> I like I looking know. at that stuff. <laughs> 
No, I think that's a good idea because obviously, especially if you're taking the oral route, you could see like, what yeah. does your HDL look like? What do your kidneys look like? What does your liver look like? Because if they're shit, then that could be a great indication that, hey, we need to add a little bit of extra health support supplements. Yeah. Like I would add a Nefrogen from Morphogen Nutrition because like it is a really good, like all, in- all encompassing kidney. Um, oh, it's not Nefrogen anymore. It's just called kidney, but that's a good kidney supplement. Like if we see liver elevated, maybe extra caps of Tudka, some NAC, um, milk thistle like laura said like see Mm -hmm. like don't just play uh don't what is it what is the the ostrich that just buries its head in the sand don't do that like if you're gonna make the decision to use like be your own health advocate right Mm -hmm. see what's happening and that way you can like again even if you add all these health supplements we're not saying that the labs are going to magically come back to normal but you can at least give your body a chance especially when you come off to already be like in the mode of repairing and reversing like the potential damages that it could cause yeah Mm -hmm. i'm having a hard time taking meg seriously with the pizza cap i'm just being i'm sorry (laughs) i know i feel like this is a very serious hers is like dead on yeah it's just on forever now I do love it though. It is just funny because we're talking too. about a very serious topic and I'm here with like my, my halo and she has her little, oh, look at that branding, the little zoom cap. I love it. Ooh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. This is it. Okay. <laughs> that actually is really cute on you, Meg. Not going to lie. Um, if y'all aren't on YouTube or watching us on Spotify in terms of like, <laughs> you know, y'all are missing out. Like this shit's pure comedy gold. It's comedy hour up in here. Oh my goodness. I think we touched on everything. I I don't think there's anything we missed, did we? No. No? Y'all can always ask us questions if you would like. 